In this video, I take multiple photographs and make an action sequence image. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, well, I'm shooting motocross. What a brilliant event to come and do photography at. There's going to be loads of thrills and spills and I want to capture an action sequence shot that has all of the thrills in one photograph. So what is an action sequence? Well, the idea is I'm going to get a bike jumping over this jump in a second and I'm going to take multiple pictures and then those multiple pictures are going to be joined together inside of Photoshop. Now in order to do that, I'm going to be using my Canon 60D and my 24 to 105 lens, but really I want the widest angle lens I can get because I've got to get the biggest sweep in possible to capture the jump coming through. So I'll be at the 24 millimeter end of my lens. And as far as modes go, I'm gonna work in shutter priority, TV on a Canon, S on most other cameras. I'm gonna dial in a shutter speed of a thousandth of a second. because so I need to freeze the bikes in midair. I want lots of bikes frozen in midair. So I need that fast shutter speed to make that happen. Now in order that I don't get a really shallow depth of field at that fast shutter speed, I'm gonna really dial up the ISO. ISO 800. Yeah, really high for a day like today, but you've got to do that to keep the shutter speed fast and the aperture small and get a decent depth of field. And of course, I'll be shooting in high speed, continuous shooting mode so that I can take multiple pictures. In this case, I think it's about six frames a second, this camera does, in order to get my sequence of pictures. Now, there is a risk that the camera might hunt for focus. So one thing you might want to consider doing, switching to manual focus rather than auto focus. But I'm going to play this by ear. And the reason I'm going to play it by ear is because this isn't something you want to do once. You want to do this over and over again because it's going to be something that's going to not work the first time, not work the second time. It may be the fifth, sixth, tenth time before you get the picture you want. Okay, so that's the theory. Now all we need are some bikes. And trust me, they're coming any second now. And when they start coming over, you won't be able to hear me talk. They're extremely loud. You can see how close you can get to the track here at motocross here at Canada Heights in Swanley. And uh, well, that's just fantastic for us photographers. Not so good for us on the video. So uh, let's wait for the bikes to come over and get shooting. OK, so they're, uh, they're coming round. And as you can hear, they're very, very loud. So you probably won't get to hear much more of this until, well, I've taken the photos, I guess. OK, ready? Here we go. So your best bet on this is not to try and take them on the first go round. You want to try and get one single person on their own. So you might want to wait until the field is spread out a little bit and to try and capture that moment. So don't be in a rush. This is going to go on for the next 15 minutes. Well, not the video, just this race. Another great tip is try not to move the camera. Try and rest it on something. We've got posts here I could use, a monopod or a tripod. That should be useful as well. But try not to move the camera too much between shots. So if you're shooting in RAW like I am, watch out for the number of shots you can take before the buffer fills up. Having a really fast memory card is something that can make all the difference. So do watch out for that. You don't want to miss that last landing shot because your buffer fills.
So there you go, there's the shots in the bag. Now all we've got to do is get these back into Photoshop and we'll try and find out which ones are the best shots. So let's jump into Photoshop right now. Well, I had a fantastic day at the Red Bull Pro National Motocross event. It was brilliant. I took so many photographs and this little sequence should work quite nicely. Ignore the guy on the white bike. Look at the guy in the more multicolored suit in the background and you'll see him fly through the air and then he lands beautifully right in the front of my frame. Now, of course, I say guy, it could be a girl. It's hard to tell. And um, they're all very well padded up and um, you can't see whether it's a, a man or a woman. However, I've got to get all of these images together. So seven individual photographs need to become one. Now I'm using Photoshop CC to do this, but the technique is the same in many previous versions of Photoshop as well. To do it, I'm gonna come up to file and then down to scripts and three quarters of the way down on scripts, you'll find one that says load files into stack. So that's the one I'm gonna click on. And that brings up a really nice little box that gives me some options. First one is where are the files you wanna to join together? Well, they're already open, so I'll add open files. Now I can tick attempt to automatically align source images. Yes, definitely wanna do that. I was hand holding, I wasn't using a tripod. These need to be aligned. I love the word attempt. It kind of fills you with hope, but not expectation. Uh, but, but don't worry, this is gonna work. There's not, no, no doubt at all this won't work. So it gathers all of the images together and puts each one on its own layer and then it lines everything up. And if I just flick through, watch the red ball sign as I go through the, uh, the sequence, the red ball sign doesn't move. It's now nice and firmly locked down, even though everything else is moving and uh, the, the pictures have been moved around accordingly. Right, so now all I need to do is to bring the seven different versions of this bike into one. And I do it very simply using layer masks. So I'm gonna flick that layer on and off and I can see I've got movement between the top two layers. I'm gonna make sure I add a layer mask by going to the bottom of the layers panel, click on the layer mask and there it is. Now I need to have black as my foreground color. and I need a paintbrush and my brush, well size probably a little bit smaller than that to be a bit more accurate, but the brush hardness 50%. That gives me a nice hard edge, and when I start painting, I can very quickly just bring those two bikes in together. Done. Okay, go up to layer, go down to merge down. Okay, don't flatten, always just merge down the two layers. And then repeat the process again. So, make a layer mask. I'll flick the layer on and off so I can see roughly where I'm going. Okay, let's just move across the screen a bit. Okay, and then I can paint where I saw him. There he is, look, okay. And in he comes, so we'll bring number three through, like that. And when you're done, go up to layer, merge down. Okay, so let's do that again. We'll add a layer mask, and we'll flick it on and off. Okay, so now he's moving a little bit further into my scene. This is good, he's getting a bit bigger. And here we go. Now, there is a little bit of a problem when you do this. Sometimes you will find bits overlap, but if they do, I always think it's best to keep the, the front image, effectively the one closest to you, as the overlap, like that. Okay, and I've got a little bit wrong there, so swap to white, and we'll just return that in. And then swap back to black to make sure I have that right. Okay, there we go, so that's four done. Remember to merge down the layers, and then repeat the process, so layer mask. So now he's traveling quite a bit further, so that's good, and I can make my brush a bit bigger using the right square bracket on the keyboard, and just bring him in like that, and you can see how it fits nicely over the marshal behind, that's... That's just luck. <laughs> there we go, we'll bring him in, bring the tire in. Perfect. Okay, so then, uh, oh yeah, we've we got this little guy over here. Now, we can actually remove him. He was there in the very first photograph. And because we haven't masked any of that out, it's, it's just been pulled through from each time we've merged down. So now, if I want to, I can remove him very, very quickly. Okay, and I can also remove things like the, the guy up there. He's gone as well. So let's uh, merge those down. We'll go to layer merge down, we'll put a new layer mask in, and now we're getting to the, the ones where it's much closer. So now I can really speed things up, bigger brush, there we go, and then he comes, layer, merge down, last one, layer mask, and I go and find the guy at the front, there he is. We'll make sure we get the little splash as he uh, has the, the, the soil throwing up there, which mostly covered me in the camera. Uh, and that's great, lovely. So there we are, we've got my sequence of pictures coming through. Let's go and merge those down for the last time. 
and then I'm going to get the crop tool and I'll just crop in just to keep the bits that are important and to lose everything else. We don't need the, the guy over there, so we'll, we'll lose him and his arm just like that. Click on the tick and maybe just to finish off, I'll get the, the clone stamp tool and I'll just sample a bit of the, the track from here and we'll just go over the fence line. Resample from up there and we'll just cover that up. There you go. Perfect. So there we are. There is my action sequence picture completed. Now, if you want to see more videos from Adorama TV, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. <coughs>